You know, reading all this uh, Blake Crouch and Andy Weir and Michael Crichton, I feel like they can maybe explain to me why time seems to go by faster when you are off work than while you are at work. Hey, what's up, bookworms? Mike back with another weekly update as we are rolling along through September here. So, yeah, I'm kind of coming to the close of a nice little staycation, just kind of chilling at the house, doing a lot of nothing, and it feels really, really good. And I thought, hey, you know what? I forgot I'm supposed to do a weekly update today. So, hey, I'm going to go ahead and do that because while the reading has been a little light on the back half of the week, the front half of the week, I got a lot done. And let's do that, guys. Let's talk about what am I reading? I did finish the wisdom of crowds review is going to come out next week but uh, it was pretty much uh, i think by the time that video actually uploaded i was pretty much in the throes of finishing this i uh, very much like you expect guys i want to say like the last 140 pages i finished in one sitting um lots of comments coming in that i can't really talk about it until then uh on on orbit's request and i'm going to continue to do what they ask if they keep sending me awesome stuff like my favorite fantasy author's new book early so uh uh, look forward to that there. I'll just say that, guys, if you are a First Law fan, I think you're going to be happy. Then I also uh, talked about this last week. That I finished this I finished this the next day, too, which was Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy by Douglas Adams. A very, very funny book. Uh, pretty much exactly what I said last week, guys. It is one of the funniest books ever written. I think sometimes with sci-fi, I feel like we feel like everything has to be super serious. Everything has to be super scientific. And this just says, you know what? It's okay to have some fun. And I feel like that's what Douglas Adams did with it. And I think that you should read it for that reason. But, you know, I'm going to be doing a, a Why You Should Read later on in this month sometime about why I think you should read The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. So there are more reasons than that. But um, very, very fun on my reread here. Like I said, I think it's the first time since uh, my kid was pretty young. Like I said, I tried to attempt to read to him and it didn't happen. Uh, and we ended up doing Harry Potter instead. But uh, with this, uh, he watched the movie and he, he enjoyed it for the most part. But I was like, you want to read that? And he's like, no, I want to finish Harry Potter. And I was like, good answer. So you don't do like me and start like 18 series at once. So you can finish one of them. And then, guys, I read this in about two days. Um, yeah, I think that, that kind of gives away how I felt about it. You guys, if you remember, I love Dark Matter quite a bit. And so much so that I wanted to pick this up like immediately. I was like, you know, I'll, I'll wait. I'll wait until it's time where I have like a little a little bit of a, a break. And then it just kind of fell into sci-fi September. I said, it's perfect. We can do it then. And uh, it's, it's kind of like, you know, I said with The Martian and Project Hail Mary by Andy Weir, how I said that uh, I'm not ready to say it's better than The Martian, but it's right there with it. it it's as good. I feel the same with this, with Recursion. I think I like Dark Matter a little more, but this is as good. I mean, this guy, I feel like... I feel like so, just kind of stupid for waiting this long to read him because this is exactly what I've been looking for since Michael Crichton passed away. And I'm not saying that he's on the level with Crichton. I'm just saying a combination of Blake Crouch and Andy Weir. I feel like I'm getting my Crichton feet fixed now. And I love that. Uh, I, I love that. So uh, anything that these two gentlemen write going forward, I'm going to read. I'm actually going to go back as soon as I got some free time on the schedule and read uh, Wayward Pines, which I know is very different than these two. But uh, all the people saying that, oh, it's just like Dark Matter, I don't, I don't see that. I mean... That's like saying, like I said, that's like saying Project Hail Mary and The Martian are the same because they both place, take, take place in space. I, I don't think so. I love the way that he plays with science in this. And uh, more so than Dark Matter, this one kind of made my head like go pop a couple of times just trying to, to, to think about some things. So uh, there is some of that. But I, 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 what I always said about Michael Crichton was he made science easy for the layman to understand. With this, is I wouldn't go as far there as saying that, like, look... If you really want to get into the science, it's there. If you don't really understand what's going on with it, it's not going to ruin the story for you. So you don't have to have, you know, really, really high academics to uh, to get through this book. But, man, this was so good. I flew through it. Uh, I, I can't wait to talk about it because it's just so many ideas presented in there that I want to talk about. And both Dark Matter and Recursion, apparently are being made into adaptations, one on Netflix and one for Apple TV. And I believe Blake Crouch is writing the screenplay for the recursion adaptation. So, fingers crossed, could be really good 
if it is done right. And then, guys, I continued on Berserk. I finished Volume 23 this week, so I think I did 22, then 23. I'm about halfway through Volume 24 right now. So, like I said, now that things are starting to slow down a little bit because September was just a, or I'm sorry, August was just a really, really crazy month with read-alongs and review copies and stuff like that, that uh, I had to kind of let the manga take a back seat. But I'm back on that, and, uh, you know, it doesn't take very long to read a, a Berserk. That's really loud. A really, uh, <laughs> to take a very long to read a Berserk novel or, or, or a volume, a trade, whatever you want to call them. Uh, it doesn't take very long. So I imagine I'm going to start flying through that here relatively soon. And that leads us guys into what am I going to read? I've already started it. This is the last book before the last book, <laughs> the penultimate book of Sci-Fi September. This is the first in the Bobiverse series by Dennis e. Taylor. This is a We Are Legion. About halfway through it, kind of got mixed feelings on it so, so far. I like a lot of the pop culture references in a futuristic setting because it makes me think of Farscape, a show that I absolutely adore. Uh, but um, I, I don't know. I, I feel like for about 70 pages now, we've just kind of been floating around doing the same thing, which is a lot of nothing. And I'm like, I just hope this isn't what the whole series is because I keep waiting for, okay, well, when we get to our destination, then things are going to happen. It's like, no, we're just going to go to a new destination now. And I'm like, this isn't what I was sold with this series. So I'm going to assume that the back half is very very different but whoever said this is like dresden in space i'm i don't get that at all not at all uh, this is very much just a i can't think of anything to compare it to i can't even say it's like the, like i said the closest i would come is farscape just in how, how uh, john Crichton would always be using the uh, the pop culture references and everyone around him would be like what is this guy talking about so uh that that's about it but uh it remains to be seen like i said i'm gonna finish it uh, i don't know about going right into books two and three right after it just kind of depends on how uh things go from there but after that guys it is the big one the reread of Doom. Uh, this will be my 13th reading of my favorite book of all time. And you say, well, what more can you learn from it after that many times? You'd be surprised how much you can pick up. I mean, don't, don't you guys have movies like that? Don't you have a movie where you say, hey, every time I watch that, I pick up something new? That's me with Dune. Every time I read it, I pick up something new or I look at something from a different point of view and I get something new out of it. That's what makes it so great, so wonderful to me, and I can't wait to start on I know there are a lot of people on the Discord that are just displeased that this isn't an actual like read-along. Uh, what I said, guys, was just I was going to be rereading this, and if you wanted to join me, you could. It, it isn't a read along, so I'm not doing the the chapter breakdowns and all that stuff. Just something I wanted to kind of you know reread it. I, it's something I reread every couple of years, and I haven't done it since I started this channel, and I feel like it's past due, and I wanted to do it before the new movie comes out again, just because uh, I, I don't really need an excuse to read Dune again. I mean, it's it's my book, you know. So uh, if you guys haven't started yet, I should probably be starting. Uh, sometime early next week, I would imagine. I'm not really sure, but there were some people who had uh, who had said they wanted to read Wisdom of Crowds first before before they join me on this. So uh, um, I don't plan on speed reading it. I like to take my time with doing. It. I've got the rest of September, guys, with the way that Sci-Fi September has worked out. I'm gonna have two weeks to go through this book, and it probably won't take that long. But I really want to just take my time and talk with others about it on the Discord. So if you haven't joined the Discord yet, guys, here's your opportunity to talk about some Dune with Mike Mwadib. Let's talk about this week on the channel, guys. We did debut As the Wheel Turns. If you don't know what that is, it's a planned uh, collaboration between myself and Madison Goodyear. I'll link her channel in the description if you missed it. Uh, she is my co-host for this. And what we're doing is we're just going to be talking about the Wheel of Time TV series for Amazon. It's just kind of an after show. That was our plan with it. But we want to talk about a couple of other things that have to do with the show. So obviously the teaser trailer came out. Uh, we both liked it quite a bit and we just kind of wanted to talk about it. So we did that and we'll probably get together again after they do the story trailer, which I imagine that they'll do. And it's going to be one episode. Uh, per per episode of the TV series, so it's a it's gonna be a lot of fun. I think uh, we did two episodes actually. We did one that was an introduction, and then one was a trailer breakdown. Because I knew if I did one and that was all together, people have been whining in the comments about how no one cares about us. They just want to see the trailer trailer breakdown. Why are we introducing ourselves for ten minutes? You know, so I thought I'd get out in front of that, even though that probably still you know is gonna happen. But mm. uh, pretty good feedback on it. Uh, um, there are some things, obviously. That neither one of us missed, you know. We neither one of us have been a long, long time fans of the series. I think we both read it for the first time about three years ago. I mean, you guys know how long ago it was for me. So we're still both pretty new to it, but we both enjoyed it quite a bit and we love talking about it. So I hope you guys will check that out. I also did my review for Sphere by Michael Crichton. That was one that was a little delayed because I wanted to let it slide into September because I think it fits sci-fi September so well because it is very much a sci-fi thriller. Uh, it's a book that I love talking about because 
Uh, you want to talk about a book that every time you read it, you get something different. I, I wouldn't say that. Uh, but when I read it as a teenager and when I read it this time, yeah, there's, there's stuff that I was able to relate to differently or whatever. But again, you have so many ideas about that ending. You know, and a lot of people uh, kind of dropped on the Discord like, what are you talking about? Well, it seemed pretty cut and dry to me. And then I bring up a lot of these theories that fans have had for the last three years. Like, wow, you know, so you start thinking about it, your mind can just start to explode a little bit when you start talking about manifestation. Read the book, guys. You understand? I, nothing I would recommend more uh, after Jurassic Park than Sphere when it comes to Michael Crichton. I hope some more of you will give it a chance. Then I love talking about the Star Wars EU, guys. Because two reasons. One, there's no universe I've spent more time in than the galaxy far, far away when it comes to reading. I've read over 60 Star Wars books, you know. So uh, I wanted to talk about the expanded universe, and that is what is now known as Legends. But to me, like I said, I'll always consider it canon. It was, it was, it was seen over by George Lucas for years, and it was so much care and thought put into it to make sure that it stayed true to the, his vision and his story. So uh, I'll always hold it in high regard. But I wanted to talk about kind of my 10 favorite books there because I feel like the EU is starting to fade into obscurity, you know? So uh, I, a lot of people like myself that maybe were a little disillusioned with what Disney did with it, you can always come back to the EU and be like, wow, this is kind of more of what I had in mind if you didn't experience it the first time. Start with the Thrawn trilogy, guys. It is so, so fun. But narrowing it down to 10 books was kind of tough, obviously, for something that I love so much. And like I, I say in that video, uh, it's something that I probably would have changed my mind about five minutes after uploaded it. Yeah, probably. I mean, already some of the discussion, I thought, I'm like, yeah, I probably should have put that uh, somewhere else, you know, or put that one on here or something like that, or maybe talked about this, you know. Lots of things when it comes to, when it comes to doing a top 10, you know, really it's, you do your basic, uh, like I said, I'll start scribbling the titles on a, on a page and then it's kind of crossing off until I get down to 10. And those were the 10 that I picked. It's very New Jedi Order heavy, but I haven't hidden that on this channel, guys. I love the New Jedi Order. I think it was the peak of Star Wars in the EU. It really is some of the best, best stuff. Well, I still say Thrawn Trilogy is the best, but New Jedi Order is right there living next door to it. But um, yeah, if any of you guys want to get more into the EU, I would love it. Uh, Star Wars stuff does eh, on this channel about kind of what a King and a Crichton does, you know. But those are three properties I'm always going to talk about because I love them. Uh, what else? I did have my discussion with Joe Abercrombie finally. Now, like I recorded that about a week plus before I uploaded the channel. I just want to get it kind of closer to the release of the book. And a uh, great, great conversation. He's a really, really super awesome guy. It really made me almost want to forgive him for killing off all my favorite characters now. You know, but uh, uh, I feel like he, he answered questions in the best way. He, uh, a lot of them that were kind of, I don't say a lot of them. There was a few that were kind of like goof goofball questions, and he answered them completely uh, professionally <laughs> and without cracking a smile. I think he did very, very well, obviously. The man is an author. He has a way with words, right? So it's not very shocking that he's a good speaker as well. But um, I had a great time with it. Like I said, that's a bucket list item for my channel was getting to talk to Joe Abercrombie, and I'm, I'm glad that he did it. You know, that actually got, my, actually got my confidence up a little bit where I thought, hey, you know what? I should start asking more authors to come on the channel. So just for grins, after I finished Recursion, I went ahead and emailed Blake Crouch and said, hey, that'd be really awesome to have him on for Sci-Fi September. And his publicist responded in like five minutes and said no. I mean, in, in so many words, she said, LOL, no. <laughs> you know, so I was like, oh, I guess uh, I guess fantasy authors are, are, are different than, uh, you know, them, them New York Times bestsellers. They don't really need our help uh, to our help as, as, as booktubers to, to sell their books, you know. So, uh, yeah, I, I guess I kind of get it. But it doesn't change the fact that I was excited to talk to Joe and, uh, and, and I did love Recursion as well. So uh, very exciting times, guys, on the channel. And I love that conversation. I hope you will check it out. I got some next week plans here, guys. Uh, first things first, you know, some microphones moved. It's because I'm working on a camera angle change for my regular reviews. Uh, I feel like since I did that little corner shelf over there, uh, it just the background doesn't look the same as it used to when I just had the, the front facing shelves. So I'm trying to move the camera around to where I can show off that corner shelf a little bit, you know, because I feel like right now it's just buried. You don't really see what's over there. So it's uh, it's going to be a work in progress. I hope you guys will bear with me because uh, there are a lot of things about it. You got to kind of tweak. Uh, I got to make sure I get the lighting right and stuff like that. Because, uh, you know, when I said I, I'll set this thing up and you'll do your framing shot and your camera and everything will look great. And then you record and then you go into editing and you're like, how did I miss that? You know, that glaring problem right there. So uh, it's going to be a, a growing pains kind of thing. But it's something I want to do because I want to show off, like I said, the corner shelf, the way that I have it set up. I think it'll be a much more aesthetically pleasing background. And when you got a face like this, guys, you got to have an aesthetically pleasing background, right? So uh, I hope you guys will, will stick with me there. There's some stuff coming out early next week that's using that new camera angle 
And like I said, if you don't like it, just wait. Maybe it'll grow on you. I don't know. We'll, we'll, we'll see. But we'll go, we'll go through this growth together here. But I'm going to be doing my August 2021 book haul. Like I said, doing it a little early. I mean, it's not really. It's going to be about the middle of the month almost. But um, another another big one. Uh, another one where, where some of you guys were super, super nice. And uh, just probably the last big one, I think. Because uh, like I said, uh, I, I felt like it really exploded there around my birthday. And I've exhausted all my gift cards and stuff now. So uh, I, I think... It, we might be coming up soon where I might have to go a couple of months without. I know you guys are kind of laughing at that, but uh, I've almost stopped buying uh, because, uh, again, I am running out of space again, and I really do not know what I'm going to do. Uh, I'm not the unhaul type, but I might have to start uh, moving some off into another room in the house just because I don't have room for some of these anymore. But uh, I always appreciate everything you guys send me. And uh, I love to talk about them and show them and give you guys the thanks that you deserve. And, and if you're looking to buy some of these, it will let you know, kind of let you know what they look like and stuff. You know, that's, that's why people like book hauls, I think. I will be doing my Wisdom of Crowds review. That's coming out on release day, guys, Tuesday, the 14th. That will drop at midnight. And like I said, I know some people are like, why, why are you doing this at midnight? Like I said, it just brings me back to my youth, going to like the record store or the bookstore or something like that at midnight release to get something. That's what we used to do with physical media when it was super, super popular. It's just what we did. We didn't press a, cl a click, a button that was on our phone or our Kindle. You know, we went and actually got it and talked to other people in the crowd and stuff like that. So, I don't know. It's just something fun that I did. I did it with Dresden Files also. I did it with uh, John Gwynn, Shadow of the Gods. It's just a lot of fun to kind of do it that way. And you know what? It gives those guys on the other side of the pond from the states a chance to see it first so good for them right uh, but uh, uh lots of uh things to talk about in that and i can't wait uh to discuss the book with you guys because i think there's a bit it's really hard to zip my lip and not talk to fellow first land for first law fans about what happens in this book and i don't know about when i've got to try to get it up sometime next week guys i'm going to try to get up my why you should read for the hitchhiker's guide to the galaxy outside of what I've told you the last couple of weekly updates because there's a lot of things to talk about. And I want to talk about more than just the first book. I want to talk about the series, The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, you know, the restaurant in the universe, all those things. I want to talk about the whole series and tell you guys why I think it is worth your time. It is more than just slapstick goofball humor. It is a lot of depth to these books. I don't think people give it credit for. And it's hard to say that about a book that's just so widely acclaimed. It's brilliant. But I, I do feel like people... Just kind of look at it as like, oh, it's just kind of a goofball comedy. There actually is a lot of heart in this story to talk about, and we're going to do that sometime next week, I do hope. Uh, there is a little bit of TV and movie talk. We got another trailer, guys, for uh, Midnight Mass by Mike Flanagan. I don't have a lot to add because, again, with this new trailer, not exactly sure what's going on. Uh, like I say, you, you have me when you say by Mike Flanagan, I'm going to watch it because I think the guy really can't miss. But basically, I think it's going to be a horror with a twist to it. And there's going to have some really great character moments and it's going to have a very, very satisfying ending because that's what Mike Flanagan does. He makes you care about the characters and you guys know how I am about character work. This guy is one of the best at it. So I don't expect... I, I was going to say we're going to hold that off until October you know, for Halloween time for our, our spooky season watches that we do at the house. But I don't know. It's Mike Flanagan. I'll probably be pretty excited. We'll probably end up eight episodes. We'll probably just go ahead and blow through it uh, that weekend. I don't know. Uh, we did get our Matrix Resurrections trailer. Uh, this is one of those things where guys, I was kind of like, no one asked for this. I'm not going to lie, though. It's a pretty good trailer. It's a pretty good trailer. And I, I don't know if it's just like this renewed love for Keanu that everyone seems to have. Uh, very much, it is hard to look at it and I'll be like, Whoa, John Wick's inside the Matrix. He's going to take it over, right? But uh, it looks a lot cooler than I expect. Now, I think uh, once it gets closer, maybe we'll do a little more speculating on exactly what it is. That comes out uh, around Christmas on HBO Max and cinemas. Um, look, I I'm one of those, obviously, I love the original Matrix. I think Reloaded, for the most part, I like to reload. It has some of the best action sequences in the whole series it has some real mind-breaking plot stuff that i understood a lot of the gripes for now matrix revolutions i have no no defense for that one i thought that movie was hot garbage while i was in the theater so if this can give it a little bit of redemption kind of in that rocky balboa way how rocky balboa kind of redeemed rocky five if it could do something like that uh I i'll be all for it I, I would love that i'd love to see this go out on a better note than the original trilogy went out on but Right now, I, I mean, I've got that wall of optimism up, you know, saying cautious optimism, saying, you know, hey, I'm hoping for the best. I expect the worst because a lot of these sequels that come out, you know, decade later, decade plus later, 
it doesn't usually go over well. It seems like Cobra Kai is still the only one who's doing this right. So uh, hopefully they have paid attention to what makes that work. So we shall see, guys. But uh, it is a very, very good trailer. I recommend you watch it and tell me what you think. Uh, last time I get into some of these Dune reviews, these Dune reviews are coming out for the movie. At first, I'm not going to lie, guys. I'm pretty sour that these people who have no idea what Dune is get to see the movie before me. <laughs> Um, it's, it's, it's one of those things I'm watching, you know, obviously if you got like your big publishers, you know, you got variety and people like that variety magazine, entertainment weekly. Sure. You got someone there in the press going to see the movie and getting to review it. I understand that. But when it's like just some dude who has a movie channel or movie review channel on YouTube gets to see this movie for me. It's not fair. Damn it. <laughs> I smacked up my camera, but, uh, yeah, uh, it, it, they're basically, I feel like most of it is overwhelmingly positive. Uh, and, and I expected that. Like I said, I've never had a worry about this movie because uh, it's Denny V. He said this is his dream project and he, he admires this book so much. I don't see him, you know, desecrating it. And uh, really the, the only negative reviews I've, I've seen have said things like it's just slavishly devoted to the book. And I'm like, that's a great thing, you know, because you look at the other adaptations and it's like, uh, not so much, not so much. Actually, you know what? I think the Sci-Fi Channel and was pretty faithful to the book. It just looked like it was made on about 200 bucks. You know, that was the problem with it. But um, yeah, I'm expecting great things, obviously. And we are just barely six weeks away now, you know, from seeing this movie. But seeing the reviews being a lot of people that have said, you know, I went into it not expecting much because this isn't my kind of thing. And I was absolutely blown away. And they're all repeating what I told you from that preview. You need to see this on the biggest and loudest screen possible. And we need to uh, support this movie so we get the second part of it. Especially since Denny V is now saying he wants to make a trilogy out of uh, this and do Messiah. So please go see it. Read those reviews, guys. Let me know what you think. I, I wasn't going to read any of them because I thought that they were just going to be nitpicking things that I don't want to get into here. And I just I wasn't ready for that. Uh, but but Quinn over on Quinn's Ice and Fire, Quinn's ideas of Ice and Fire, uh, he I'm not gonna lie, guys, his Dune coverage blows mine away. So I, I, I'm not even gonna pretend I'm in the same galaxy with him. I, I love the book longer than him, but he really dives deep into stuff. I really recommend his channel. He's really really just fantastic. If you know my channel, I'm sure you know his channel, right? He's got like 400,000 subscribers, so I'm sure you probably know who he is. But uh, he went through a lot of those reviews and, and, and read a lot of them, and I felt like uh, he held my hand through it. And it, yeah, it's overwhelmingly positive. I mean, people were calling this a masterpiece. So uh, I, I hope that this not only is great and true to the book, obviously. But I hope this finally gets Denny V his well past due recognition from the Academy. You know, Arrival got a lot of nominations, didn't win very many. I, I think that this is going to win, from what I saw, guys, this is going to win cinematography and special effects without any contest. But I'm hoping he gets his best director and hopefully best picture from this movie this time. I know that's really kind of looking forward to a movie who hasn't come out yet, but just everything I've heard, and from what I've seen, guys, just 20 minutes of the movie, this is going to blow people's minds. This is going to be like Lord of the Rings when it first came out. People were just completely floored in the cinema. So I hope that this is a new generation that gets to experience this for the first time and they get more interest, obviously, in reading the book. Hey, guys, doing that sometime next week if you want to join. But, guys, that was my week. What's your week looking like? Drop in the comments and let me know and have yourselves an awesome weekend.